Today we have a, a, an exciting announcement with our women's basketball program and uh, here to make that announcement and make that introduction is our director of athletics, Matt Kupek. Thank you, Tom. Yep. This is a big day and uh, we are live streaming so the Saluki Nation is watching in and it is great to have you all here. We've got the dog pound represented back there. Coach, get there. They are right there. They're going to make our games live. But this is Tom, as Tom said, this is a great day. I'm going to say a couple quick words and introduce Coach, and then she's going to give some remarks. We'll have some questions. But it is great to have you, all Saluki fans and nation out there. It's great to have you with us. But today, we announced the 11th head coach of the SIU women's basketball program. It's a storied program. We've won championships. We won this past year. But with Coach Kelly Bond White, we think we're going to take this program to a whole new level. Kelly is just oozes with success. You've all read her bio. You just be around Kelly and you know she's a winner. And what we do here, we win on the court, we win in the classroom, and we win in the community. And just being around Kelly, you get, you know she knows how to do that and do it right. Her background, of course, she's a Chicago native. Part of our pitch to Kelly was, come on home, Kelly, come on home. <laughs> and uh, played basketball at the University of Illinois. Went to a couple of sweet 16s. How about that point guard? So she knows how to distribute that ball. I looked, I was reading about it, lost to UConn in one of those. But uh, we'll, we'll get them back, we want them back. <laughs> but had a great career, then went into coaching. And the last 19 years has been at Texas A&M, 15 as the, uh, the uh, whatchamacallit, senior associate. I think that's the correct, is that Kelly, is that the right? Close, Close enough. <laughs> associate head coach. 19 years, 18 years, A&M went to the NCAA championship tournament. 18 out of 19. Three Elite Eights. A national championship. 18 All-Americans. Kelly knows how to win. Kelly knows how to do it right. And that's what we do here at SIU. And that's why we are so pleased to introduce the 11th head coach of our women's basketball program, Kelly Bond White. Appreciate y'all coming out. Um, they wanted me to start with just uh, a few remarks. I promise you I won't be long-winded want to leave you enough time to open up uh, questions, but just welcome. Thank you all for coming back, uh, coming back out. Um, I know we had some things set up, but uh, you know we had to get all the legal stuff done and the paperwork side, T's are crossed, I's are dotted. Uh, so I know there were a lot of you. I was in the car with Matt yesterday and the phone just kept buzzing from uh, different reporters. Uh, Bucky, I think I was in there when you called on, uh, on one of them. But uh, I was just really excited and we wanted to get the news out but thank you for your patience. And uh, just a really excited for you guys being here. Um, the opportunity to come back home. Sorry, WSIL, I wanna take, take you out right there. Let's the opportunity to come back home was huge. Um, I got excited to talk to my family. My husband, my daughter are here. Uh, she has three generations of grandmoms down in Houston. So they've got the first 10 years of my family and now we get to shift back uh, to Illinois. Lynn, our accountant, was doing some paperwork and she was like, hey, I need your ID, I need your social security, I need all of that. And I always said, I was never gonna change my license until I became a head coach. So when I whipped it out and she saw I still had an Illinois driver's license, she was like, wait a minute now. <laughs> I just thought you were down in Texas for almost 20 years. I said, I have my ways, I have my ways. <laughs> but I'm a true, I am a true Chicagoan, South Side, uh, but I always wanted to hold true to Illinois because this is my heart, this is what raised me, and this is what gave me my start. I need to tell y'all the energy has been electric. Um, the amount, my phone, I can't keep a proper charge on it uh, from all the coaches throughout the state, throughout the Missouri Valley uh, and region. They've all been calling, they all got players, they know we got spots. Um, I'm excited about the former players. Um, throughout the state that are excited and want to trade in some of their colors temporarily to throw on some Saluki gear as well. I'm excited about 
being at A&M for 19 years, I had a little dog on my chest reveling. And I'm, I'm just ecstatic about our supporters that want to not trade in that reveille, but they want to share reveille with Saluki and invest in the Saluki program like they have with the Aggie program. So I know, Matt, you'll be excited about that because I said bring it on. We need all the support we can, uh, we can take. Um, but along with that energy, one of the su things that made us successful at Texas A&M was the sorority that was formed that started with our young ladies. And then it became year after year and generational that we didn't have to recruit as hard because our former players, our parents, they were constantly surrounding the program. And that's what I want to reestablish here is bring back that connection, bring back the legacy of Salukis that have laid this foundation to take it to the next level so our current young ladies can understand the sacrifices they've made to allow them to cut down nets like they did last year. So that's what's important to me. Um, I want to start in just saying I'm thankful for the vision of Matt and uh, Chancellor Lane. They flew down to uh, Texas. And uh, my daughter refers to them as the pancake guys because uh, we had a nice little breakfast spread waiting for them to show them our appreciation. I love to cook, so you guys will all be invited to the house because um, that's my love language uh, is taking care of my staff, my players, and all of you guys. But uh, they came out, and we spent about three or four hours. Matt snuck away when the North Carolina game came on so he could watch uh, <laughs> watch some highlights in there but that was something that really excited me as they shared their vision of what has been and obviously coach stein coming off a championship year but even more importantly of what could continue to be and where we could take the program now i am going to tell chancellor lane who's a great recruiter as is matt but um there's a connection that actually got to me first before they did chancellor lane's son chase lane was a wide receiver on our football team so I woke up early one morning, and I look at my phone, and Chase slid in my DMs. <laughs> and so I was like, what is Chase talking now? To his credit, he's such a quality young man because he's one of our best football players. Um, he's doing great things in Aggieland, but he is a strong proponent and advocate for women's athletics. He's at all the different games. He's promoting them. He's tweeting. And he certainly doesn't have to do that, but uh, he might have a future in this coaching thing, too because he reached out to me and was like, hey, coach, you got to talk to my pops. Look, I got an opportunity for you. So Chase, Chase was the first one that reached out to me. So I, I told him I would shout him out when I had uh, this opportunity. But definitely thankful for, for Matt, Chancellor Lane, and then uh, Katie, who had to drag me all around town uh, yesterday. Really appreciative of their vision and their passion that comes through for uh, SIU. This is a full circle moment for me. And I shared this with my daughter, who's going into the fifth grade. Uh, Cindy Scott, my very first offer in the seventh grade, came from SIU. And I called my aunt, who still lives down on uh, Lakeshore Drive. And my mom and my aunts used to keep this huge chest of all my report cards, all the crap that I made, the letters and presents cards that I made. And I know that letter is in there. And so when I walked in Coach Stein's office and saw the pieces of court, with Coach uh, Scott's name and everything on there. I called my aunt and asked, could she find that letter? I know it's in there, but I would love our young ladies to be able to see the investment that SIU has been making in Illinois basketball, starting with me for years. So it's a full circle moment. And not just that, my coaches, when this whirlwind has happened and everybody's calling and we're trying to figure out what's the best fit, my college coach, Teresa Grintz, has been a calm through the storm. Um, for me, my point guard coach, Kathy McConnell Miller, and even the coach that I turned down that has been a true mentor for me, uh, Jim Jaber. All of them have stepped up and helped me through this process in transitioning uh, to become a coach. And I know some of you guys know the story. Coach Stein was on the staff at Illinois that first recruited me. Uh, so she coached me my first year. So I told her I gave her the roots of those gray hairs. The rest of that, is not that, that wasn't me. I gave her the roots. And just briefly, um, my players, I haven't had a chance to meet with them. I've met with a couple that came through that I saw through the facility, but we're going to meet next week. I uh, was walking through the halls, and I saw the Saluki Standards Pyramid. And it talks about toughness. It talks about integrity. And it talks about building champions. And that's all, guys. That, those are, we talk about those are value-based things 
but those are habit driven. And that's all I want our young ladies to know. All I want them to focus on singularly is the next step. The next step. We don't have to look at the big picture right now. We're going to look at the details of just taking the next step of what's right in front of us. And um, again, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't thank my family. They surprised me. They got here at about 4.30 in the morning once the press conference got pushed back. Uh, so again, they are, uh, they are a safe haven for me, and I'm glad they could be here. So now we'll uh, open it up for questions. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Uh, let's do this. Uh, raise your hand if you have a question. Coach will call on you. And if you could identify yourself and the organization that you work for. Lucky Dan, Southern Illinoisan. And the first thing I wanted to ask is you, you coached under Gary Blair for 22 years. You mm -hmm. played under Teresa Grant. You mentioned Jim Jabber. What do you take from each of those three folks that will help shape your philosophy yeah. as a head coach? All of those guys and add in, um, I'm sorry, I'm remiss that I didn't mention my high school coach, Arthur Kenny and uh, Hank Hicks. All of those guys are program builders. It's not just about a team. They're all detail oriented. And every little piece, every day when they wake up, their minds are thinking, how does this affect recruiting? How does this affect our young ladies? Why are we doing this? To a point sometimes where you think, they might be a little off. Uh, and I can throw Buzz Williams you know, into that group as well because those are people through watching them and watching how all of them are process oriented. They're process oriented, they talk about the journey and they hold their kids to an incredibly high standard, to an incredibly high standard. But what they also do is they listen and they listen and those are similarities that you give your young ladies or we have always given our young ladies ownership of the program and that's how I think the investment really starts is when they can define what our values and culture are and you give them some of that responsibility it's a lot peer driven success is a lot better than coach driven success sometimes and uh, we'll need that internal leadership to go where we're trying to go. How do you, how do you plan to make this happen this, you know, in the first however m number of days here what, what's the initial game plan for yeah. you here? Same as my players the next step when we walk out of here, that I'll have that plan. Like when we walk out of this room, my plan is to jump on the phone. I gotta slow down a little bit. Compliance won't let me pull the trigger uh, on the portal just yet of some kids that are out there because we gotta get some more paperwork done. But uh, definitely just talking to coaches, getting in the gym, making an investment to uh, bought a carry-on, but I know how to pack, so it's about two weeks worth of clothes in there. Because <laughs> Matt, Matt said, when do you want your return ticket? I said, I don't know. Just give me some clothes so I can get in the gym, you know, with our young ladies. So honestly, that's what we do. You know, it's about the next step and not trying to look and trying to project of what that is, but let's control what we can control, and that's what our, our energy is today. Yeah, and one thing I, is, I always hesitate to say that word because it's not a sell. You know, I, I think w the best way to attract talent is just being authentic. And just like I was given, we talk to them about access to opportunity. We don't promise much. I promise that they're going to get a quality education. I promise their parents they're going to be well taken care of. Any other promises is why we got 900 kids in the portal, you know, right now. So what I promise them is access to opportunity. What I promise them is that, you know what, we're going to work hard. We're going to get after it. Our track record of me and my assistants shows the proven development and shows that we know how to win. I'm not going to ask for a blind faith. I'm going to establish trust and establish relationships through building, um, you know, bonding moments with the team where that trust happens over time. But that's what I would tell recruits that are listening. You got an incredible opportunity here, and I'm here to give you access to it. How do you see your team playing? Well, you know, one of the things I want to do is control pace, control tempo. Ball's always been in my hand. I'm a point guard. So when it's time to push, we're going to push. But when it's time to slow it down and execute and uh, have isolations, um, I want to look to score early uh, in the shot clock through our transitions, primary and secondary. Um, I'm a Dean Smith fan, so that secondary break will, you know, be in there. 
uh, at times. I know, Matt, that wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a shameless plug for you, but, <laughs> you know, I'm a Chicago girl. That, the Carolinas, it gets in you by way or two, three, so it, it's in there. But um, I want to control tempo on, on both sides of the floor. Our defense will create opportunities for our offense as well. So we're going to get after it, and, uh, you know, that's what we're looking to do. Thank you. Welcome back, I should say. I'm Jake Stephen with ABC3 WSIL. What attracted you to the show? You know, the biggest thing when it first, one, is obviously home. Two, was the investment that you could see with Cindy making the opera, having the opportunity to show her program. I feel like she won that one championship, but if it wasn't for COVID, I think she would have had some time to have a little bit more success uh, in there. So you could see the foundation starting to rise. Uh, again, so that definitely was an attraction when I saw it. Obviously, coming back home, but singularly was the vision that Matt and Chancellor Lane spoke. Um, those guys are good. I mean, they're they're relentless now. Uh, so, I mean, just with them sharing and saying, "Hey, this is what I'm going to do. This is what we're capable of doing." And and I wrote notes, so we're going to hold you to it. <laughs> but uh, I think that was the exciting part for me, and knowing that the Missouri Valley. I mean, it's a proud basketball you know, conference, it has tradition. And uh, with the people that are coming in too, I think it's the time. I think you saw that in on both sides of the NCAA tournament, um, that parity is shifting because of the uh, portal and uh, because of kids understanding that they can play at different levels and still have access of exposure with our ESPN deals and uh, streaming and all of that, I think is creating a, a slightly leveler, level playing field. So I think uh, for me, that was definitely the attraction. Zero pressure. We talked about that one step, right? That, that's all I'm focused on is just taking the program one step at a time. Um, obviously, we've had some turnover in the roster due to graduation uh, and everything like that. But we will set our own expectations, you know, internally, uh, and we'll work for those again one step at a time. You mentioned that roster change. What do you know? I know you said you're not going to meet, you know, with those ladies until next week. But what do you know about the players you have coming back? You know, I know I won't get into specifics on them, but I know quite a bit. Um, Synergy, I've been on there all night watching film, uh, getting to know the young lady, tearing through some of the games, getting to know them a little bit uh, better through film. But film, film doesn't lie. But for me, I want to give them that clean slate of getting in the gym and, and really working with them and working through our system and seeing, you know, how they fit. But there's some talent there. But obviously, we've graduated a lot, so uh, we have some roles to fill. There is. That's that big picture, you know, that we talk about, and that's something that, you know, the athletic department has uh, stood on. But, again, you guys will get tired of me saying it. it. It's about that journey. It's about that journey. And when you look up, most people, when you're sitting there and you're cutting down nets at some point, you don't, you don't stop and just think of that moment. You think of that moment. National championship game when we're on in, in Indianapolis and the confetti is falling, it wasn't the highest moment of my career. I immediately thought back to the team that had lost to Gonzaga the year before and that heartbreak that they went through because we knew we had a really good team that year. But it took me back to that moment of being in that locker room, experiencing that heartbreak, but watching those kids come together. And then we didn't have to say a lot. They were driven. They were driven. And that's where my mind went back was to the journey. So when you talk about long-term goals, it happens one step at a time. Hey, Matt. Uh, as, as an associate head coach for 15 years, what are the biggest experiences like from 15 years yeah. and bringing you to as a head coach? Because that's yeah. different from an assistant coach, but yeah. not quite a head coach. Yeah. For 15 years, I imagine maybe you had to be that head mm -hmm. coach role or whatever. Yeah, just a little bit. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about probably my biggest mentor of them all, Gary Blair. Uh, the man is a Hall of Famer, legend in the game that just stepped away from the game. When you don't. When I've been around folks of his caliber, the Vivian Stringers of the world, the Pat Summits of the world, they're not afraid to delegate. They don't, they, their egos are removed, and they bring out the best people. One of the first things Coach Blair will tell you is, I know how to hire well. And within that, when I first got with him, my experience was jumping on the court with the players, practicing with them. Th that's how I coached, was just being there and helping the players out through practice. What I can bring 
throughout that 15 years is the many hats that he's allowed me to wear. And over the years, sometimes I was like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> um, he's got me doing so much. But he was preparing me for this moment. And time moves by really fast. People always ask. I know it's going to come up. But when you're enjoying what you're doing, when you're surrounded by the people um, that make your life go and may give you a good quality of life, and then you have great young ladies that uh, you know want to be a part of something, the time moves by fast. So I promise y'all, it didn't feel like 19 years uh, down there, and I hope this next 19 doesn't feel like it too. Coach, later today you're going to meet with members of the you know, fans dog pound group after. Yep. Everything. What what's your message to Salute the Nation about coming out and supporting these ladies on the court? Man, you're a part of it. The biggest thing is our program is completely transparent. We need each and every one of you. We want you guys involved. We want use utilize me. I mean, more than anything, the number one thing I am is a servant, first for him uh, and then for this community. So wherever you guys need me, that's where I'm going to be. And I want to get invested as in you guys, the dog pound especially, as we're talking, you guys know the heartbeat of campus. And, and that's what I want to attack. I want the demographic that we have, the families that we have coming to the game. I want to attract um, more faculty, more young families in the area, uh, local local members of the community, and I want to bring them in uh, to the program as well. So we have a slew of ideas that I want to get with you guys with that can link all those different demographics, and uh, that's where I think we can take the program. As yesterday goes on, and, you know, you kind of wait for that moment where the announcement can be made. Yep. Was, was there any one thing or any one person or whatever just kind of flashed through your mind at that moment thinking, You know, I think the biggest thing is you think about your whys, why you do something. And the first thing I talked to you guys about was access to opportunity. And I will not get emotional here, but what I will tell you, I mentioned my coach, Arthur Penny, and uh, Hank Hicks. Those guys drug me around the city, um, taking me to opportunities, taking me throughout the region to get exposed. Um, holding me accountable when I was a knucklehead, you know, at times, uh, and keeping me straight on the path because they knew what was out there before I did. And so for me, that's what was really humbling for me yesterday when you can get into that stillness. We talked to our kids about a value system, and you guys know how this weather has been lately. So I'm on the flight from Houston to St. Louis, American, I believe it was, and probably 20 30 minutes into the flight, we hit turbulence. And I'm jotting down some notes, right, the, all the stuff that I want to talk to our kids about and values and our culture and all of this. And that plane drops about 100 feet just out of nowhere. And you, everybody grabs on like that's going to save us if we grab on, <laughs> you know, to our seat. But at that moment, when you talk about what you see, the first thing I saw was my husband's face. The next thing I saw was my daughter's face. Then I, I literally saw a little pigtail girl with a basketball. That was probably me, but also indicative of the young ladies that have become my family. So when you're going through that and all you got is, come on, Lord, <laughs> come on, ride with us, hold this plane up, that's where your mind went. So in those moments, I saw my family, I saw my former players, but I really was able to get quiet and really reflect on my faith and thankful to God on how he's covered me and brought me to this moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My, my husband's probably sick of the glow of the computer at night <laughs> when I can't sleep and I'm in bed just flowing through synergy and it allows you to just break down film and, and pull different aspects, you know, in parts of the game. So I'm excited with notes on where I feel like, you know, how I can utilize, you know, our players, how I feel like they fit and uh, really looking at our needs and how we can build and not just us, but going through the rest of the Missouri Valley as well and looking at what, uh, what our opponents have. Yeah, you know, we'll have some folks. Um, uh, HR has told me not to call out, you know, folks just yet until we get them signed and everything and going. But uh, I have some folks in mind that are like-minded, core-driven, and understand what I want uh, out of there. But also, I feel like their families would be an addition 
uh, to Carbondale in the area of the Southern Illinois area as well. So I was really, as I talked to people, and I'm not going to be quick with my entire staff, but with the core of it, we got to get up and running because, like we said, we got we got a lot of spots uh, to fill. We have a lot of needs that we want our young ladies. We have about three weeks before their finals hit where we can get on the court with them. Uh, so we want to do that and just start building uh, our system so they know, uh, you know, what's coming. Uh, and we'll talk about hopefully we'll have some of them back this summer uh, and then be able to continue working with them. Anything else? Coach, thank you so much. How thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Take a few minutes if you would like on your way out just to introduce yourself again and, and say mm -hmm. hello and greet the coach. Thanks, right. everybody. Thanks, guys. This way.